Good morning. Good morning, April. How are you doing? Jay is excited to be in church this morning. I don't know about the rest of you, but he is. Um, let's all stand. Um, I want everyone, everyone seems a little tired, a little out of it this morning. So maybe we can give three fist bumps to someone not on your same seat. That means you might have to move, get some blood flowing this morning.
on the court. Yeah. Oh, heavens. having fun this morning. I don't know about y'all, but we are. We're going to start with a new song this morning. So y'all just sing loud. We're missing several on our worship team, but we're going to power through this morning. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes the way. He hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from the grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your The prisoners now we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing his praise we're the beggars now we're royalty we were the prisoners now we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace of the Lord sing his praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. joy here this morning? Can I see some smiles? Jay's going to share some announcements. Please listen up. Get your bulletin out. There's several things happening in the near future. All right, guys. I'm going to start out with what my uh, opinion is the most important, <laughs> and that's Heroes Day. Okay, so do you guys remember the food trucks we had here last Sunday? How awesome was that? Okay. <laughs> Awesome. So <laughs> this year for Heroes Day, we're going to do the food trucks, and instead of having it here, we're going to have it in front of the fire station. And we're expanding the people who qualify for Heroes Day to police officers, firefighters, EMTs, medical team, hospital staff, and veterans. So how many people know somebody that falls in that category? Awesome. You have a job. Are you guys ready for your job? Invite someone who is a police officer, a firefighter, an EMT, medical team, hospital staff, or veteran. Can you do your job? Amen. Yes. Okay, so listen. This, this type of ministry is huge. It shows our community that we love them by our actions. Okay? And so everybody that falls in that category, they can get a voucher. Make sure that they know they can get a voucher. And guys, what date is that? 
September 12th. September 12th. Okay, so put it in your phones. If you've got a smartphone right now, put it in your smartphone right now. Make sure that you're inviting people and make sure that we have plenty of people going to that event and knowing that we care about the, our heroes in our community. Yes, Trick. <laughs> False. All right, so on the, on the front page, we have men and women of valor. If you're planning on uh, doing that or if you thought about it, prayed about it, the sign-up deadline is August 29th. If you've decided to do it, Men, we're starting September 13th, and women will be starting on September 20th. Uh, the ladies' conference, that's October 2nd. The deadline for that is August 30th. So let April know if you're planning on doing that by August 30th. And it's only $40. So if you're looking for a fun event for the ladies, do that. Last announcement I have, prayer night is starting at 630 this week. So we've been doing it at 7. We're going to back up to 630. So we're starting the same time as kids' night. How awesome would it be if some you knew somebody was praying hard for you every single day? That's what I want to bring that to, okay? So I need more intercessors because if all of us do it, like my prayers aren't powerful if I'm praying for everybody in this room. Like not that they're not powerful, but it's, it's not a lot of thought going into it. But if I'm praying for, if I've got 10 people and I'm praying for five people every single day, Man, that's, that's a lot of power. And so if you guys have been thinking about being a part of a ministry, please pray and consider doing that because I want every single person in our church and our community prayed for on a regular basis because we have a battle against the enemy and we need to win that battle. And so that's going to take a lot of intercessors. So please consider that if that's something that's been on your heart. And let's get back to worship. of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good Deeper still as 
that you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love love you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you that's who i am this morning. Thank you that we can trust the fact that we are loved by you. Is that so encouraging this morning to know that you are loved by him? The creator of the universe loves you this morning. I know you to soften my heart and break me apart I need you to open my eyes to see that you're shaping my What you say that you're good and your love is great. I'm broken inside. I give you my life. I need you. Your spirit. 
have our prayer team come up at this time we're going to take our needs to the Lord and um, ask the Lord to meet us here this morning do you know that the Lord is here his presence is here with us and um, you know sometimes this may seem like it's just oh it's that time we're going to pray now and you may kind of take this time as just another to do thing in, in service but this is not what this time is. This is time for you to link arms with another prayer team member and have them pray with you this week. Have them go to battle with you for needs that you are facing or maybe um, people in your family are facing. This morning, I know that I pray, but if Jill, you and Brandy would specifically pray for my parents, they are battling some pretty hard sickness this week and so um, I know that just by asking this prayer team to pray guess what they're going to go to battle with me and I'm not praying alone so if you have any needs this morning please feel free as we pray and even when we sing the next song to bring your needs this morning thank you God for your goodness thank you God that even when we don't have the faith God you meet us right where we're at God, when we're, when we're just doing everything in our power to have a mustard seed of faith this morning, God, you said that's enough. If we can bring our needs before you and say, God, we don't got this this morning. We can't do it. But our eyes are focused on you who can. God, we trust you. God, I pray for the ones that are represented here this morning. Lord, the ones on our prayer request list this morning, Lord, that are struggling, I pray for them. God, I pray for guidance. I pray for blessing. I pray for calmness and peace in mind. I pray for healing over the ones that are sick. God, I pray that you would break every chain this morning. Lord, every battle that the enemy is throwing our way, God, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God, the ones that are struggling in their minds, Lord, that didn't even know if they could make it to church this morning, but have come. For the ones that are watching online and God just can't seem to get over things in their life. God, we pray for the blood of Jesus in their life. And God, I just pray right now that you would have your way in the rest of the service. God, anoint pastor as he brings the message from you. Lord, the words that you have to say to us, God, I pray that they would penetrate our hearts and that our minds would be ready to hear what you have to say. And God, we thank you because you hear us. God, I know you hear us this morning. In your name we pray, Jesus, Jesus. God, we trust you. the peace storm surrounding me let it break catch your name and steal call the sea to steal the rage in me darkness 
the darkness turn more Jesus Jesus the silence fear and Jesus Jesus you make the darkness turn more Jesus magnify you this morning, Father. You are worthy, God. You are worthy of our glory. You are worthy of the honor, Father. We worship you. We magnify you. We worship you and we magnify you, Jesus. You are so worthy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Our kids can be dismissed to tag kids church this morning. Amen. Okay. Okay. Kids will stay here for now. Due to technical difficulties. Amen. God. We worship you this morning, Father, for you are worthy. You are worthy, God, in spite of everything going on, in spite of, um, Father, sicknesses and busyness of life and school starting. and I mean, just everything that is taking place, Father, you, you are still God. You are still God. And so, Father, this morning I pray, Lord, that we would for the remainder of the service. God, I, I pray, God, that worship has, has helped us to focus on you. God, to lay aside the, the busyness, to lay aside the, uh, the rush, the, the just, Father, just everything that we've got to do right after this, Father, that we would lay it all aside, Father, that for the remainder of this service, God, that we would allow you, Father, to speak to our hearts and lives, God, that God, I pray, Father, that worship has prepared the soul of our heart for your word to be planted in. And so, God, I pray, Father, that you would have your way. God, that you would speak to hearts and lives. God, I, I know that you desire to. <laughs> you, you so desire to speak to us this morning, Father, if we would just, if we would just wait and listen. If we would wait and listen, God, to what you were wanting to say to us this morning. So, Father, I pray, God, that we would, Father, shut our phones down, put aside any distraction, Father, whatever it may be, God, that we would uh, even remove it from our minds, whatever it is, God, this morning, and allow you, Father, to speak to our hearts and lives. God, it, it may not be anything that is said in this message, but, God, it's something, Father, that you that you solely, that you individually speak to our hearts and lives. So God, I pray for your anointing power to rest upon this message, that you would help me. Father, give me focus of mind, give me, give me clarity of speech, I pray. God, that you would have your way in this service. Allow your anointing to rest upon me, God, in your precious name. Everybody said, amen, amen. Thank you for being here this morning. Um, do want to to kind of reiterate Heroes Day. Uh, this is uh, kids. You are good to go. Thank you, Mike Simone, for all of those who helped get that getting that ready. They did not want to stay in here and listen to me. Um, some of y'all might wish y'all could go with them, but y'all y'all have to stay. Um, kind of just reiterate uh, Heroes Day. Uh, that it, we we try to do it a, a, on around September 11th to to, to kind of. Acknowledge uh, those who gave their gave their life on September 11th, uh, and, and so uh, this this September 11th, I'm sh I'm sure you know, if I'm not mistaken, is the 20th anniversary of September 11th, uh, and, and so 
uh, on September 12th. I know it's the day after, but on September 12th, we're going to honor our uh, our heroes, our first responders, our veterans who have served in, in the military, who, who may presently be serving in the military, uh, but also uh, we're including in that all of our hospital staff um, uh, because they, they went through a tremendous uh, amount of pressure and amount of everything that went on with COVID, uh, and so we want to acknowledge them as well uh, this year. And so if, if you would, uh, from 5 to 7 on, on September 12th, uh, please come out, help us uh, uh, celebrate, help us acknowledge and honor all of our first responders, our nurses and our, our uh, doctors, our hospital staff and our veterans uh, for the sacrifices that they have made uh, throughout their life and for our country. Amen. As of right now, no, no. So if, if we do, we'll, we'll have more information related to that coming. But as of right now, it's going to be fairly simple. Uh, and so just come out, support. Uh, you guys did a tremendous job um, in, in our during our school appreciation uh, and, and the food trucks acknowledge that uh, and, and we're so appreciative of it. And so uh, I want to say thank you for that uh, and, and thank you for every one of our teams uh, that have that have I, w I was looking um, uh, and, and just kind of thinking through uh, and, and uh, this isn't in my notes, but thinking through our church and uh, just uh, what we've done or where we've come from in, in the eight years that we've been here. And, and, and I'm so thankful to Pastor Mike and Barbara for the foundation that was laid, amen, for the foundation that was laid, and, and uh, thank the Lord that we've been able, hopefully, to build on that a little bit, but uh, just everything that God has done, and thinking through and, and remembering people's faces, uh, and, and what God has done in their hearts and lives, and I'm so thankful for every one of our team, uh, if you serve on a team, if you serve in any way, uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of April's heart, we so appreciate it. Uh, and it, you help make this church go, amen? Uh, you help make this church go, so thank you so much. Um, I'm still working through uh, our, our, our text from a couple of weeks ago, Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're not going there this morning, okay? So don't think we're on part three of Second Chronicles chapter 20, but uh, it, it's something that I haven't been able to get away from. Second uh, Chronicles chapter 20, the, the promise in, in verse 15 uh, was, was a stupendous promise. It was great promise, but, but what I cannot get away from is the phrase in verse 12. It continues to stick with me, and it's at, it's at the bottom of verse 12, and, and Jehoshaphat says, King Jehoshaphat says, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. God's continued to to speak to my heart and life it, through that and in that. And, and uh, I don't know what, what lays ahead of us, church, uh, but we've got to keep our eyes on him. Amen? We've got to keep our eyes on him. So what a tremendous phrase from uh, the Scripture. I'm thankful for the Word of God, aren't you? Go ahead and turn to Galatians chapter 6 this morning. That's where we're going to be at. And as you're turning there, uh, we're going to be talking about the God of the long view. God of the long view this morning. And so as you wait, make your way to Galatians chapter 6, we're going to read verse 9 here in just a little bit. Uh, but as you make your way there, I'd like to read a poem or a prayer uh, from Cardinal Dearden. Uh, it, it's a little over 40 years old, and it goes something like this. It says, "Help! it helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts. The kingdom of God is not only beyond our efforts. It is beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of God's work. Nothing we do is complete. This is what we're all about. We plant seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold a future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference, and I love this, that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders. We are ministers, not messiahs. 
We are prophets of a future, not our own. This week, our promise is found in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, and the Word of God says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. We will reap if we do not give up. God of the long view. You know, I've come to realize in, in my, in my um, short lifespan that God views time differently than I view time. God understands time. Let's not go there. God understands time differently than you and I understand time. Amen? Amen? We understand time like our kids understand time. A kid has a birthday party. Four or five-year-old kid has a birthday party. They, the, the, the party comes, the day of the party comes, and the kid has a blast. They get everything that they want for, for presents, and, and, and they're having fun celebrating. But then as everybody leaves, as everybody goes home, as things are packed up and packed away and cleaned up, it, the kid begins to cry. And the parent, being a good parent, leans down and says, Hey, what's the matter, bud? What's going on? Did something happen? And he says, no, I just have to wait a whole nother year to celebrate. That's a lot of like us. That's how we understand time. We want things to happen in, 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 in a very quick manner, right? That's how we understand time. We haven't grown up a whole lot. Or for some of us, it's like, you know, some people being upset when Christmas is over. And they realize that they have to put up all of their Christmas decorations and they have to wait at least six months to pull them out again. And they have to wait by law nine months to even begin to think about singing Christmas carols. And even then, it's way too early. It is the law. It seems like forever away. But God is an eternal God. And when we get impatient, when we complain, I wonder if he doesn't look down on us like we look down on our kids and say, hey, it's okay. It's okay. It, it will be here before you know it. It'll be here before you know it. Peter says it this way in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved. That with the Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. You know, we have a love-hate relationship with that verse, right? Anybody ever thought about that verse? We love it at times, and we hate it at times. We love it when God does something quickly that we thought would take forever, right? We love it. Man, I thought that would take forever, and, and, and God, you just did it like that. But then when something that looks like and it should only take a few moments takes forever, that's when we hate that verse. We love it when it happens and we didn't expect it because it, we thought it would take forever, but something that should only take a few moments takes forever. We kind of hate it. But the thing of it is is that God works in both ways. Amen? He works in both ways. He works now, and he works in the future. And that's why Paul says, and it tells us here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, he says, in due season, meaning in his time, in God's time, we will reap if we faint not, if we don't quit, if we don't give up. You've prayed, you've planted, you've given, you've watered, you've worked, and yet nothing that you've prayed about, nothing that you've worked so hard for, nothing, the seed that you've planted, the seed that you've given to, the thing that you've been working on and investing your time in, nothing, the person, whoever it is, nothing seems to be happening in a timely manner. We can get discouraged, right? Nothing seems to be happening. Are we here this morning? All right. Nothing seems to be happening. Don't give up. Don't quit. Instead, what we need to do is we need to learn while in the waiting to celebrate what God is doing behind the scenes. Amen? To celebrate what God is accomplishing behind the scenes because it's greater than we could ever imagine. You see, church, this morning, God is always moving. He is always moving. He doesn't ever pause. He doesn't ever stop. What seems to us to be a pause 
or what seems to us to be, uh, you know, he done, he done took the movie out of the VCR and threw it away or broke the DVD, whatever time era you're in. It's simply he's still working. We just can't see it. Because frankly, this morning, it'd scare us to death if, uh, death if we did see it. It'd scare us to death, not death. It may scare us to death, too. I don't know. Scare us to death if we saw what God was doing behind the scenes. So we need to learn to celebrate in the delay like we celebrate in times of deliverance. God sees time differently than we do. God sees time differently than we do. And, and, and the principle that we can learn from this is that God's timing is always perfect. Amen? God's timing is always perfect. My timing is always flawed. God's timing is perfect. My time is always flawed. A preacher and a professional golfer became friends. They became really good friends. And I know that sounds like a joke or the beginning of a joke, but it's actually a true story. A pastor and, and a professional golfer played on the PGA became good friends. And the pastor, uh, over a course of time, invited this golfer to church because he did what he's supposed to do, right, as a pastor. That was supposed to be funny. That was, we are tired this morning, baby. Whew. So the pastor did what he was supposed to do. He invited his friend to church on Easter, right? So the golfer, being a good friend that he is, he comes to Easter service, he brings his family, and, 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 and all the guests that were at Easter service that day, they filled out a response card, and, and they put it in the offering plate or the offering, whatever it was, and, and, and the pastor had him take him back to his office, and, and he, was, he was searching for his friend's response card. And there was four different responses on this response card, and, and one of them was, I'm a committed follower of Christ. You can check that one and let the pastor know or the whoever it was that you're a committed follower of Christ. The next response was, I, I'm on the journey to become a follower of Christ. I'm just not there yet. And then another one was, uh, today I'm making a decision to become a follower of Christ. And the last one was, I'm not interested. And so this pastor finds the response card of his friend, the golfer, and, and, and his response was, I'm not interested. The pastor was a little discouraged, but he kept being a friend of the golfer. He kept befriending him. And, and in fact, over the next nine years, this golfer and his family would come to service over the next nine years, and every time the response was the same, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Over those nine years, this pastor walked through a tremendous amount with this family a tremendous amount of ups and downs, including a very, very messy divorce. And then year 10 rolls around, and he comes to service. He comes to Easter service, and, uh, and, and the pastor was, was working in his office, and he was looking through the response cards from Easter service, and he came across his friend's response card, and it was a little bit different this time. It said, I'm on the journey. I'm just not there yet. Year 11 rolls around, and... and, and he comes to service, the golfer comes to service and fills out a response card. And, and again, the pastor is not too excited because for 10 years, you know, the pattern has been, I'm not interested or, I, you know, I'm, I'm slightly interested now. And, and, he, and he, he summoned through the response cards the day after Easter service and he comes across his friends and it says, today I'm making the decision to be a follower of Christ. 11 years. 11 years this pastor invested, 11 years he had gone and he had been a caddy for him. He had taken him to lunch. He had worked through a messy divorce. 11 years he had planted and he had watered seed that he had planted and it ended up leading to someone else's life being changed for all of eternity. 11 years, that's a long time. September 18th, we will be here eight years. It's been a long time. That was a joke, too. <laughs> Paul says, don't grow weary. Don't grow weary in doing good, for at the right time, in due season, we will reap. If what? If we don't give up. If we don't quit, if we don't faint, if we don't stop, we will reap. 
It's in moments like this when we've been praying, when we've been investing, when we've been investing our time again and again, and, and we've been trying to disciple, and we've been trying to, to, to plant seeds in this one or, or that one who, who is not a believer or whatever the case may be, and it looks and it appears like it will never happen. It's in times like these that we can learn the following principle. And that principle is this, is, is that if I can be faithful now, I can be fruitful later. If I can be faithful now, I can be fruitful later. If you were to travel to Tunisia, a tiny country, and if you were to check into a hotel, when you get into your room, more than likely you're going to find a gift bag waiting for you, much like you do sometimes here in the United States. They have different amenities there for you, bottles of water, chocolates, or different kinds of snacks and stuff. If you've never checked into one of those hotels, you probably should stop checking into Motel 6. Anyhow, man, just they're dying, all of them. We should kill them and not let her ever resurrect them again. But you would probably you would find a gift bag, and in Tunisia they add a, 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 their, one of their own unique little gifts to their gift bag. There's water, there's chocolates, and there's snacks in there. But there's something that is unique to the country of Tunisia, and that is a bottle of olive oil, a bottle of olive oil. You say, well, why, it, why would they give you, and what are you supposed to do with a bottle of olive oil? Well, the reason that they give you a unique, a such a unique gift is that it's unique to their country. It's a part of who they are. It's a part of what they do. See, even, even though Tunisia is a small country in size, it actually is the fourth largest producer of olive oil in the world. I mean, it's small. It's tiny. Look it up on the map. You can Google it. I give you permission to get on your phone and Google it right now. But it is a tiny country. But it is the fourth largest producer of olive oil in the world behind much bigger countries like Spain and Italy and Greece. So olive oil is a big thing to them. It's a point of national pride for them. But that all wasn't always the case. In fact, uh, over 1,600 years ago, in fa- in actually in modern-day tu- Tunisia, uh, there's a tombstone on the outside uh, of modern-day uh, Tunis, I believe is the town. Um, and, and it's on the outskirts. It's a tombstone, and it has an inscription on it that is over 1,600 years old. And this, is, this inscription is written in Latin, and it, and it simply says this. It says, here lies Dion, a pious man, meaning a religious man, a, a follower of Christ. He lived 80 years, and he planted 4,000 olive trees and that's all the inscription says about Dion here lies Dion a pious man he lived 80 years and he planted 4,000 olive trees by all accounts history would tell us that Dion wasn't an extraordinary man he wasn't like Alexander the Great that conquered the known world at that moment in time he didn't he didn't make some scientific or medicinal discovery that changed and healed people through in the future. He, he didn't do anything like that. He lived, he planted trees, he died. That was the life of Dion. He lived, he planted trees, and he died. But as I said, he was also a follower of Christ. And Dion understood something. He understood the long view. You see, an olive tree can take over a decade to start producing its fruit can take over a decade to start producing its fruit. So Dion, he may have planted 4,000 trees, and yet it's not too far out of the imagination. It's not too out far, far out of the realm of possibility to, to, to think that Dion may have never seen one of the trees that he planted ever produce an olive. But he planted. See, if Dion's goal was to become rich off the olive trees, then by all accounts, he failed. I mean, surely if he had been wealthy beyond imagination, surely the history books would have said something else about him. So if that was his goal, he failed greatly. But that doesn't seem to be the point of his life. Dion understood the long view. And because he planted thousands of trees over 1,600 years ago, today... There's an industry in the small country of Tunisia that impacts the world's commodities market. 
An olive tree can live well beyond 2,000 years. And so many of the trees that Dion planted are still alive today and they're still producing fruit today. What is Paul trying to tell us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1? See, the fruit that you and I bear, <laughs> the, pl- the seed that we plant, <laughs> the seed that we water, if the Lord tarries is coming 2,000 years from now, we'll be producing much more than just olives. What's Saul, what's Paul actually trying to tell us in Galatians 6, 9? What is he, how, how is he trying to strengthen us? How is he trying to encourage us with this promise this morning? How is he speaking into our life today when he wrote what he wrote over 2,000 years ago? Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 9, he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. (laughs) But only God gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters, they are one. And each one will receive his wages according to his labor. But only God gives the growth. Many times, church, we grow frustrated. We can get upset. Because we pray and we pray and we pray. And and we talk to people, and we plant the seed, and we water, and we think we're doing what God has called us to do. We're doing, we feel like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And and, and many times we can get frustrated because we don't see God moving. We don't see Him moving through our prayers. And we don't see hearts and lives being touched and changed or, or whatever the case may be. But what we fail to realize is that that we may be the ones that are laying the foundation in prayer so that God can work through someone else. You may be a planter this morning. You may be like Dion. You may be planting. Some of us, some of the others of us, we may be the ones that water. We may never actually see growth take place. But this morning I ask you, as long as the kingdom grows, As long as people's hearts and lives are changed, does it matter that we see growth happen? Oswald Chambers said this. He said, I want to tell you a growing conviction within me. And that is this. That as we obey the leadings of the Spirit of God, we enable God to answer the prayers of other people. I mean that our lives, my life, is the answer to, to someone's prayer, perhaps prayed over centuries ago. This morning, church, <laughs> who's, re- who's actually responsible for you being here? Who's actually responsible? Scott, 50 years ago, somebody could have been praying for you. You're not 50 years old yet, I don't think. But 50 years ago, somebody was more than likely praying for Scott. If maybe you're like me, and maybe you have a, a mom that prays and cried out to God, and, and, and she's the reason that you're here this morning. But, but it's not just my mom that prayed for me, right? Because I had a grandpa and I had a grandma and I had a great grandpa and a great grandma that, that cried out and they, and they got a hold of God because they knew that there was going to be a grandson or a great grandson that, that needed a life encounter moment with Jesus Christ. So I ask you again this morning, who's actually responsible for you sitting in the seat that you're sitting in this morning? You say, well, pastor, my mom gave birth to me. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. Who helped birth you spiritually? Who prayed the prayer that impacted your life and helped you encounter Christ? Dion. Dion and his planting of the olive tree teaches us an important principle. Here's the principle. If I can be faithful now, if I can be faithful now, Someone else 
can be fruitful later. If I can be faithful now, someone else can be fruitful later. But pastor, God's not moving. <laughs> pastor, nothing's happening. My, my situation isn't changing. My circumstance isn't changing. I'm fighting the same fight I've been fighting for years. If I can be faithful now, someone else can be fruitful later. So understand, church, and, and know even though we may not see him working, he's working. He's working. And everything that God does is worth waiting for. Everything that God does is worth waiting for. We read the Bible, and we have the privilege uh, of skipping ahead, right? We have the privilege of skipping ahead, and, and if we start out the chapter and, and, and it's intriguing, man, you know, David killed a lion and a bear with, you know, with a slingshot in his hands. And I want to find out what he did to Goliath, right? I want to find out how the story ends. And so we have the privilege of, of reading the Bible, reading the story, and, and reading who's in, the, in that story and the character in that story. And then we have the privilege of reading the end of the story and finding out what happened, correct? David didn't have that privilege. So when that lion came up and, and, and tried to get those sheep, he didn't have the privilege of knowing that I'm going to sling this rock and I'm going to kill that lion. Or I'm going to kill it with my bear. He, he, didn't, he didn't have that privilege. He didn't have the privilege of knowing that I'm going to rip this lion's face off with my bare hands. That is awesome. But David didn't know, have the privilege of knowing that, right? He also didn't have the privilege of knowing that, that when he went and stood before Goliath, that he was going to pick up five smooth stones out of a brook and that he was going to put one in his sling and he was going to sling it and it was going to fly precisely where it needed to fly to and hit Goliath in the forehead, knock him out, and then he was going to go over and chop his head off with the sword. He didn't have the privilege of knowing that when he started spouting off. Right? We have the privilege. They didn't. And so a lot of times when we read the Word of God, we take the tension out of the Word of God. That is good stuff right there. Because if you don't think that David was afraid or that David had doubt in his mind or that David was a little bit stressed out when that lion came out, you got another thing coming. Because I guarantee you, the Bible says that he was young and he was rudy meaning that he had a baby face, meaning that he was really young looking, meaning that he was the baby of the family, and, 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 and yeah, he had bigger older brothers, but he didn't have a lion as a brother. Have any of you ripped the face off of a lion? Have any of you stood in front of a lion and tried to rip the face off of a lion? I, I promise you, as I stand here this morning, that David probably had a little bit of worry. He was probably a little bit stressed out. Can you imagine Daniel in the lion's den not being worried? They didn't feed them dudes every day. So when you got thrown in there, the intention was that you was going to die. That was the purpose of a lion's den. Okay? So if you don't think Daniel was a little bit worried or a little bit stressed out or that he was a little bit afraid, no matter God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow and I'm going to pray, but if you don't think he was worried about the consequences, then you don't think Daniel was human. When we read the Bible and we have the privilege of knowing how the story ends, we take the fear out of it. We take the stress, we take the worry, we take the tension, we take the apprehension out of the Word of God, and we don't read it properly. Because I guarantee you, they were people just like we're people. Amen? And I guarantee you, if you got thrown into a lion's den, some of y'all would have to go home and change your britches. Right? 
They didn't have the privilege of removing the tension. They didn't have the privilege of removing the stress and the fear and the worry out of the situation that they found themselves in. And so a lot of these people that we hold in high esteem, when we read the word of God, face problems and they face fear and they face doubt and they had some of the same feelings. I guarantee you they had the same feelings that you and I do when we face problems that seem insurmountable. Amen? Can you imagine some of their posts if they had Facebook? Or if they had Instagram or Twitter or any of the other social media account, chat, chat, snap, Snapchat? Or any of those other things. Can you imagine here? Uh, what about Noah? Facebook post. I know we're safe and all. But can we hurry up and get it done already? It's getting kind of stinky in here. Or, or how about the three Hebrew guys who, who walked in the furnace? Nothing like a sweltering walk through the furnace with Jesus. Hashtag I ain't bowing. Or how about Mary, the mother of Jesus? Can someone please tell Joseph it really was God? And I still love him? Hashtag premarital problems. If you don't know what a hashtag is, ask somebody younger than me because I don't know how to use it. I just know I see it in there. Joseph, Jesus' earthly father. Anyone know of a good divorce lawyer? Man, that is funny. Come on, you guys. That is funny. Okay. All right. Think about Paul. If I get stoned one more time, seriously, somebody's going to go meet Jesus. But because we're able to read the rest of the story, we know how it ends, right? And we miss out, like I said, on all the tension that they felt as well. But because we're able to read the end of the story, we also know that God moved in those situations, right? We also know that God moved in the situation, and and whatever situation they found themselves in, God moved and he interceded on their behalf. Why? Because they didn't quit. They didn't quit. Can you imagine the outcome of the three Hebrew boys if they had bowed? Or, 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 or Daniel, if he hadn't continued to pray? Or Mary, if, Mary, if she'd have said, no, what's Joseph or what, what is everybody else going to think? What would, have, what would have been the outcome? But they didn't quit. So we have the privilege of reading the rest of the story. Don't give up don't give up. God's going to come through on your behalf. God's going to move on, on the seed that you've been that you've planted, that on the seed that you've watered, on the seed that you're praying for, on the on the person that you're investing in, on the situation that you're in. God's going to move. Keep moving forward. Don't quit. Amen. The Hunan province in in China is one of the hardest most remote areas in China. And it has large, unreached people groups. A Christian organization that they started, they planted, they, they, they opened up a coffee shop in a small town in the Yunnan province. Uh, the town was about one million people. I guess that's considered small. The coffee shop is the only coffee shop in town. It's the only coffee shop in town, and it's the only foreign-owned business in that town as well. And here's what I want you to understand about this town and about this area uh, of China in the Yunnan province is these people don't drink coffee, not because they're saved, but because they drink tea. They're tea drinkers. That, that's their culture. They grew up drinking tea, not coffee. But yet they're, they're, they're gaining a taste or they're learning to develop a taste for coffee because of this coffee shop. One young man rides a bus for two hours, clear across town. He goes into the coffee shop to drink coffee, but he also develops relationship, and he also learns about Jesus. And this is happening on a daily basis. People go into the coffee shop. They drink coffee. They develop relationships with the people in in the coffee shop, the the Christian organization that has opened that coffee shop up, and, and they learn about Jesus. 
If you know anything about China, it, you know it's a closed country. Missionaries aren't, aren't very welcome there. After several months of this young man coming and traveling two hours on a daily basis, he, he, he prays a prayer and he gives his heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ and he becomes the first convert of the first church that God is planting in this town in the Yunnan province. And that team from that Christian organization that is there, they had a growing desire to expand their reach. They wanted to reach out beyond the town that they were in to, to the other villages, the other towns that were surrounding there. And so uh, they began to explore that. And one of the locals told them that, that there were coffee plantations in the mountains surrounding that town in the Yunnan province. But again, remember, these people are tea drinkers, okay? They're tea drinkers. And yet there's coffee plantations in an area of China where nobody drinks coffee, they only drink tea. But the Christian workers, they investigated it, they found it to be true. And in fact, the Yunnan province, they come to find out the Yunnan province grows 90% of the coffee that China produces. It grows 90% of the coffee that China produces. In fact, Starbucks has a blend that is the Yunnan coffee blend. Okay? For all of you that, that uh, like coffee, you can, you can look that up. It's factual. Okay? But in China, you can't just go gallivanting around the countryside. You can't just go travel and do everything that you want to do uh, in, in China, especially if you're a foreigner, because there's somebody always watching you. Somebody's always watching in, 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 the, in the nation of China. You have to have a reason to go. If you have a work visa, it has to be stamped, and you have to, you know, you have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to have a reason to go where you want to go, and you have, a, have to have a reason to be where you're at. But now, this Christian organization, because they found, find out that, this, that there's coffee plantations, now they have a reason to go into the mountains, and they have a reason to expand their horizons, to expand their reach. And so, what do they do? They go to the coffee plantations. They begin to develop relationships with the coffee plantation owners, and they begin to share the gospel of Christ with them. But they have a reason to be there, because now they're buying their coffee directly from the coffee plantation. But again, how do tea drinkers come to grow coffee? Keep that in the back of your mind. Th th these are tea drinkers, okay? Everybody understand that, right? How do tea drinkers come to grow coffee? You ever, uh, anybody ever read that scripture that says, before, God, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you? Anybody ever read that scripture? Anybody ever read that verse? Anybody ever read, uh, what is it, Jeremiah 29, 11? Is that the verse? Huh? The plans I have for you? Yeah? So, so God always has a plan, right? That's what he's trying to communicate to us. God always has a plan. He always has a plan. And this plan began in 1852. 1852, a French missionary, and i got to hurry, a French missionary by the name of Pierre Charles Renou went to the mountains of the Yunnan province, and he, and he went to try and, and build the church among the, the Yi people, the Yu people. Uh, and this is the same place where this Christian organization has opened up this coffee shop. He didn't, however, have any success. He didn't plant one church while he was there as a missionary. There wasn't one person that came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He, he, in fact, his, his, his endeavors as a missionary, his endeavors to impact the people there with the, with the gospel of Christ was, was actually a colossal failure. But what Pierre also took with him besides the gospel of Christ was he took with him two coffee plants. See, Pierre was, was French. He was French. And, and, and if you know anything about French, they're kind of coffee snobs. And, and, and so he wanted to take these plants, and he wanted to plant them, and he wanted to grow, and he wanted to roast and brew. I don't know how it all works. I just, I, I'm just, I just wrote stuff down. And, and but he wanted to brew his own coffee. He wanted to be able to grow his own coffee beans so that he could have his own coffee. But when he got there, he found out that the environment there in the mountains of the Yunnan province is perfect. It's ideal for growing coffee. So he began to teach the natives there about the coffee trade. And he began to show them that in addition to growing tea, that they could also grow and export and make a living off of growing coffee as well. One of the original plants that he took with him over in 1852 still exists and still produces coffee to this day. 
through the God of the long view, made it to where Christians missions organization has access to hundreds of thousands of people who are in need of a savior through a missionary from 1952 who planted a coffee plant. It's the God of the long view. Now there's a growing church in the Yunnan province of China because of a missionary in 1952 who had no idea about the plan of God. You've been planting. You've been watering. You've been praying for people in this community or people that you know. You've been praying for them for five years. You've been praying for them for ten years. You've been praying for them for 20 or 30 or 50, however long, and nothing seems to be happening. Don't quit. Don't quit. But why, Pastor? Nothing is happening. They're not going to change. They're never going to change. They're, they're, they've always been that way. They're always going to be that way. M- Pastor, my circumstance isn't changing. I feel like quitting because I cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm fighting the same fight that I've been fighting for a year, for five months, for six months, for five years, for ten years. I'm still fighting that same fight. I want to quit, Pastor. Don't. (laughs) Keep praying. Keep fighting. Keep watering. Keep planting. But why? Why, Justin? It's not working. It's not happening. God's not moving. Why do I need to keep going? Because in time... (laughs) In due time, if we don't quit, Paul says we will reap. We will reap. In due time. What is in due time? In due time is his time. It's his time. In his time, that victory you've been fighting for will come. Keep fighting. In his time, those those people that you've been praying for, those souls that you've been burdened for and been praying for, in time, those souls will surrender their heart and life to Christ. Keep praying. Pastor, I'm planting seed, but I'm not not seeing anything happen. Keep planting. Pastor, I'm watering and I'm I'm tending to it and and I'm reaching out. I'm, I'm doing what I feel like I should be doing. Keep doing it. In time. In his time. In his time. Some plant, some water. God gives the increase. Pastor, I just don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. And Pastor, I just don't know what to do anymore. I go back to Second Corinthians or First First Second Chronicles, sorry. First Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse twelve. God, we don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Pastor, I've grown tired of watering. I've grown tired of planting. I've grown tired of fighting. My situation's too tough. I don't know what to do. But my eyes, if I encourage you this morning, you keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. Because in his time, in due time, in due time, you will reap. You won't ever reap if you quit. You won't ever reap if you quit. You've got to keep going. You've got to keep fighting. You've got to keep moving forward. You've got to keep putting one foot in front of the other every day. Pastor, it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Let's just stop. (laughs) If you stop in five years from now, in 10 years from now, 15, 20 years from now, he's not going to be sitting in these seats, but should be sitting in these seats. Do you hear me this morning? Do you hear me this morning? This church exists and has existed. And you're here today because somebody prayed. And years from now, if God carries this coming and this church still exists, there will be people in these pews, in these chairs. Why? Because you didn't quit. 
he didn't quit. In his time. In his time. God, I thank you for it. I thank you, Father. God, I thank you, Lord, that you work in the here and now. That you work in the here and now. But God, I also thank you. Thank you so much that you are the God of the long view. And God, what we can't see happening or taking place in the future, you see and you know and you understand. And God, you are you are moving in all hearts and lives. You are working in all hearts and lives. And Father, you're trying to get us to a place and you're trying to move us closer to you and draw us closer to you and move us to, to, to a certain place. Father, where we can continue to make impact. Well, Father, if we're faithful now, we can be fruitful later. And if we're faithful now, someone else can be fruitful later. So, God, I pray, Father, this morning. God, we look around and all we can see is the fight that we're in. We look around and all, all we can see is the is the circumstance or, or the tribulation or the turmoil, the trial that we're in right now. Father, all we can see, God, is the fact that we've invested so much time and yet nothing has happened. So, God, we're looking through temporal, short-term eyes. And so, God, this morning, this morning I pray, Father, that we would get our eyes off of the temporary that we would get our eyes off of the temporary, Father, and that we would focus our eyes on you. That we would fix our eyes on you. And that we would just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Father, one day at a time. Father, when the opportunity comes, that we would continue to invest again and again. And when we grow tired and when we grow weary of praying that prayer for that same person or that same situation, Father, that we would pray that prayer again. Father, that there would be a passion, that there would be a fire reignited in our hearts and lives, Father, that we would be re-energized this morning, Father. It's, it's still going to be difficult. It's still going to be difficult, but God, help us to understand what we'll be missing out on if we quit, if we give up. In due time, we will reap if we don't give up. God, I pray, Father, that you would speak to each and every heart and life. That you would speak to each and every heart and life. God, that we're not only working for the here and now, but we're also working for the longevity of your kingdom. Help us, Father, I pray. God, you're speaking to hearts and lives right now. You're speaking to fa Father, to you're speaking to those who are tired. You're speaking to those who are weary. Father, you're, you're, to those who have thrown up their hands, God, and they they just don't know anymore. They just don't know. God, I pray, Father, that you would strengthen them this morning. That you would strengthen them this morning. God, we all, we all get tired. We all get weary. But God, help us. Help us in those moments. Help us in those moments to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. God, I pray for strength this morning. I pray for strength. I pray, Father, that you would reignite the passion, that you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them, Father, that they would leave from this place. Leave from this place encouraged with their strength renewed, knowing, Father, that you are moving, knowing, God, that in due time, Father, we just got to keep going. We've got to keep going. And in your time, in your time, we'll reap the harvest. 
still hate that. God, I thank you for speaking. I thank you for moving on every heart, every life. God, be with us as we go from this place. I pray that you would bless each and every one. Bless each and every one. Keep them safe, Father, I pray. Bring us back at the appointed time. And continue, Father, to speak to our hearts and lives throughout this week. God, in your precious name we pray. Everybody said amen. Thank you for being here this morning. You're dismissed. Go in the blessing and in the grace of God.